Hi folks, Gareth McDonald here from the Hockey Nova Scotia office. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at some small area games that our coaches can run in their practices. Development coordinator Bill Short joins us now to offer a few tips. Bill. Thanks, Gareth. Our first drill we have tonight is called Goalie Defending the Tire. Uh, this is a favorite with goalie coaches. Um, again, a goalie uh, coach controls the puck at the top. Uh, the net is removed from the end zone completely and you put a tire in the center of the ice. Uh, this can be a bike tire or a car tire, all members have access to. Uh, the goalie must protect or defend the circumference of the tire with shuffle-like moves. The players attack two versus two and score by hitting the tire with the puck. Um, the key points here is again the goalie staying in the uh, shuffle position, moving, moving around the tire. The players have to move the puck like usual but this time they have to keep the puck on the ice to score. Next drill we have up is our progressive one-on-one -on -one or activate one-on-one. -on -one. Um, this is a game that takes a bit of thinking and a bit of uh, control by the players to dis make decisions on the ice. Uh, again, the coach starts at the top with the puck. Um, you can have this with one or two nets. Tonight we're using one net as our example. Uh, the player begins one versus one if the coach dumps the puck in. If a player has an offensive opportunity, they can go to the net and try to score. If they don't, their next objective is to pass the puck to their next player in line. That player must be uh, standing on the, the face-off dot, the neutral zone dot, in order to get the puck, and it can go two on one. If they, if the, at any time, if the, if a goal is scored, the play stops and it goes back to the next one on one. If they don't score in that two on one, and the player that is one gains the puck and he doesn't have an offensive opportunity, he then can activate a player uh, to go two on two in his line. Um, and this can go in any, any permutation or uh, configuration of up to three versus three. Our key teaching points here are really deciding uh, decision making on whether you have a good offensive opportunity uh, as well as passing skills and of course communications which is a key factor in all these small area games. Our next drill up Gareth is a pretty simple drill. Uh, this is a basic, what I call it, almost one you might want to start with if you were coaching. Uh, it can be two versus two or three versus three in the end zone. Uh, this is really dependent upon uh, the age, size, and skill of your players. Uh, the bigger the player and the more skill you may want to go two on two. With younger players or less skill you may want to go three on three. Uh, the nets are both placed on the side on the half wall. Uh, there'd be a goalie in each net in this situation. If you only had one goalie you could put the net in the traditional crease and play this uh, with the goalie. In our situation here too we've placed two coaches uh, in each corner and a coach at the top. Uh, these coaches are all options for players to pass to. Uh, we put some basic rules in place in this game. Uh, one of them is on a turnover, the, part of the, coach, the coach must uh, receive a pass and give a pass back. Um, this, is, uh, this is a rule that you can put, in, put into a lot of the games, and I think it's very important for the players to understand that there's uh, rules like that to have, as well as the fact that the players are um, getting their heads up and having a, getting in a give-and-go situation. This is a game also that coaches can add rules on, such things as if you wish to have more than one pass before you shoot or pass to a coach before you shoot. And uh, like I said, it's a very basic game and it's a good starting point as one of your first small area games. This game up next is called a small area game with a called tip and rebound. And really that comes, the name comes from that's how the method of scoring is on it. It's a little different. You have a net down at the bottom of each circle on the goal line. Uh, you have the players again traditionally on the on the dots. Uh, you play this two versus two. The difference is you place a defenseman and or a coach in at the top of the point, They're like they'd be playing on a power play or playing a defensive spot. My my advice here is if you have a, a team with less skill or younger age, put a coach in there. Uh, if you have a team that has some pretty good defensemen that can take shots and make good decisions, put them in because it's a good growing uh, game for them to make good decisions. Uh, so the play starts with the coach dumping the puck in. Players have to feed the points. The only way they score in this game is off a rebound or a tip. So the, some of the skills we're looking at here are finding open ice to get to the net because you can score on either net. The other part of it is is that the uh, players are forced to tip and look for rebounds. So they have to be facing the puck. Uh, where it's really good for the defenseman at the top is learning how to shoot, uh, keeping the puck down, making things happen, whether it's a rebound shot, whether it's a shot for a tip, as well as making decisions. They may have to partner pass to their, to their uh, def uh, defense partner on the other side and making things uh, best opportunity for them. 
So some of those key teaching points are how to, to uh, screen a goalie properly, uh, tipping skills, and quick shots from the defense. 2 on -oh. And this is a fun game. You can do lots of permutations and configurations of this one. Um, it's basically the players line up at the top of the blue lines. we got the, the nets down at the bottom of the circle and the goal lines. And it's 2 on 0 in the goalie. They give a chance to go in, pass the puck as many times as they want. And then they're able to take a shot in the net. Just one shot. This is the type of thing for fun stuff, some creativity. Uh, the goalies, uh, you, you have a chance to put a, a, a score on there. Uh, whoever scores the first five goals or ten goals, uh, they're the winners. Maybe they're not going to skate at the end of practice or whatever it is. Um, this can be done in one-on-ones if your numbers are limited. But uh, in this case, we did a 2 on 0 on the goalie. So it really helps the goalies get some experience on some outright offensive opportunities as well as uh, some players coming in, seeing some creativity. And that's one of the big things about our small area games is creativity. Small area game at center ice. Uh, this is one of the favorites. I've watched pros use this game. Uh, they love the puck protection, the movement. What happens here is you take your nets to center ice, or you could do it at any face-off circle if you're restricted and didn't have access to center, and you put the, pie, the nets on the edge of the circle. Um, you put a player on the edge of the circle from each team. So on one side is a player in one color jersey, in this case in a blue and a gray, and the other side in a blue and a gray. Uh, in the middle, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. You can use those players as support to pass the puck, get to open ice, and then it's quick shots on the goalie. So it's a real small, confined area. I think the big thing here, one of the big things that I've noticed when I've watched players do this is puck protection, uh, quick shots, using their teammates, and again, addressing themselves, being prepared for a shot or a pass. Small area center boundary. Uh, this is a small area game in an end zone where you have uh, your nets traditionally on the half wall. Um, the coach again at the top controlling the play. The difference here is you have a, a cone at the blue line and a cone against the boards. Uh, this basically makes a, a center ice line that the players are not allowed to permit it to pass from either side. Uh, it's a 2 on 1 in each end. So if the players are, are working at uh, 2 on 1 against a defenseman and they're trying to score so it's some good uh, getting themselves open, making space on the ice, if that defenseman is able to gather the puck, regain possession, he then is looking up to pass to a player on the opposite side of the ice and let them get on the offense for the two-on-one. Uh, this is another one that helps defensemen make good passes, good decisions. Again, communication skills are, are big here because once you get the puck, the players have to know who's open. Last one we did here was uh, an area game called uh, three on three with defense support. And it's a larger area game. Uh, you place the nets outside the blue lines. So you're using the neutral zone here. And they're about halfway between the top of the circle and the blue line. Uh, at each blue line or a ringette line, whatever you feel is best, you place the players on either team. So in this case, we have the blue team on one side and the gray and the other, and they're a diagonal. Behind each net, you have a defenseman from either side that's defending that end. So in the case of the blue or the gray behind the respective nets with pucks. Coaches at center ice, red line with pucks. He starts the play by dumping the puck in. Uh, once the players either have missed the net in that three-on-three -three battle in the neutral zone, once they've either missed the net or the puck's frozen, it now activates the defenseman in that end. He's now looking for hit one of his three teammates with a pass. So this game can go on. Uh, what I like about this game here is that you have the defenseman uh, becoming involved. It sort of becomes a breakout situation, a turnover in the neutral zone. They should have their feet moving, always looking up ice and uh, making themselves a, a better passer. Good first pass is a great quality here we're looking for as some of our teaching points, as well as the players on offense looking to present themselves. So it's a bit bigger game, but again, a lot of uh, offense to it.